high-powered lawn equipment like lawnmowers and generators are being phased out here in California. Governor Newsom signing the new law over the weekend, ordering state regulators to ban the sale of new gas-powered equipment by 2024. The state this month banning the sale of gas-powered lawnmowers and leaf blowers by 2024. Today, we learn sales of gas portable generators that run under 25 horsepower will also be restricted by 2028. It's going to be loud. Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Living in the old land of the setting sun sure has its positives and negatives. There's this, which is just two hours drive from this. But also, if you like to modify cars or like gas powered things in general, circumstances are only getting worse for people like you and me. So we decided to take one of those soon to be banned small displacement engines and strap it to an impact wrench. We're rapidly closing in on 100,000 subscribers, a milestone for this channel, all thanks to you guys. You'll have to excuse our presumption of getting to 100k, but I mean, it's just been over a year, you guys are insane. Seeing as we're not really the live streaming type, this project is our little fun gift to you as a thank you for clicking, watching, we just appreciate you. And it was quite a road to get to where we are now with today's impact, and we've even learned a few things along the way that may apply to you and the future of cordless battery tools. We wanted to give it a try. After all, this is Milwaukee's cordless impact wrench. But look at this thing over here, there's a cord. A refillable gas tank would be truly cordless, the ultimate Milwaukee fuel, if you will. You know, dead dinosaurs. Turns out there's a lot of pitfalls to building one of these yourself, as we and our new good friend and viewer of the channel, Logan Neidlinger, found out, who's been helping us with much of the fab work and first result being V1 of the TTC gas gun shown here. This is a Ryobi Weed Whacker two-stroke plugged into the back of this Makita-like bastard child of an impact now. The thing is, when you plug a gas engine in the back of one of these, we're using the gun's current planetary gear reduction. It might be 11, 15 to one reduction like this impact we're showing. So it's experiencing 19, 20, 21,000 RPM and gearing that down to just 1500, 1700 RPM to not bog down that brushless motor. But with the gas engine, despite this end having more beans, this end is still getting hammered less often with less force. That eight to 9,000 RPM two stroke being turned into just 800 RPM or so, less speed on this hammer means less force on each impact even if it is super capable of overcoming that hammer spring, which is what I think we're seeing in that first Instagram video, a slow RPM, sort of not powerful impact wrench, which means a regular cordless impact still has much more beans as we're showing here. and more RPM. Obviously none of us were happy with the power level, so we sent Logan a perfectly functioning M18 high torque to be cannibalized. Let's face it, Milwaukee's been dragging their feet a little bit, coming out with the Gen 3 high torque, like they did with their Gen 3 compact, so we're taking things into our own hands. Step one, of course, disassembly and thorough inspection by the team. If we want the beans, we're going to have to bypass this Milwaukee's 11 to one gear reduction and just strap her right into the hammer cage. 8,000 RPM from the 30cc Ryobi would be an 8,000 RPM anvil. So thanks to some custom 3D printed parts, we have the V2 of the gas gun. A handsome tool, you have to admit, and a TTI made Ryobi Milwaukee Frankenstein creation that just rubs me in all the right ways. But for beans, yeah, it was even worse. The Ryobi engine just bogs down now, having to overcome that hammer spring 8,000 times a minute is just not gonna happen at this size. So what's the answer? 
yeah, you guessed it, more power, a 60cc two-stroke, two times the displacement now, and crucially, a gearbox. So more power and geared down to power through just about anything, but not 11 to 1 like the Milwaukee on the reduction, just 5 to 1 now. Which means after, thanks to Logan, some custom laser cut parts and welding to put this all together and make it play nicely, we're now 15 to 20 percent higher in RPM than that original Milwaukee in battery form. But with an engine behind it, that should really build some steam along the way. Preliminary testing versus a Harbor Freight High Torque was pretty promising. So back to the TTC compound she comes. I mean, have you ever witnessed a more beautiful sight than this? One of the reasons we bought another M18 is because this gas gun, or Project GG, only goes in reverse, and we didn't have data on a five second reverse only run in an episode's past. The gas gun definitely has some junk in the trunk compared to its counterpart here. She takes a 25 to 1 premix of two-stroke oil, so yeah, smoky deluxe. But what about those beans? Our first test we're calling reverse working torque, five seconds in reverse. In case you're new to this channel and expecting figures like 1000 and 1400 as it's written on the box, yeah, that's not usually how things go down here. Here's the Gen 3 M18 with a high output battery. Let's see the first test. Five seventy-eight, and that is quite good. Still towards the top of all the half inches we've tested, despite being near five years in age. Can't be mad at that. Now here's the wannabe Gen Three fuel. I don't know M60 because it's 60 cc's, and it reminds me of old school belt-fed freedom. Okay, that's our bad came off the socket. This thing is a handful. It was coming out strong though for just two to three seconds of action. Let's try that again. Eight hundred and forty-seven. I'll be honest, all of us thought this thing might kick the bucket on the first run and we had nothing to show, but 847? Needless to say, that's a record in half inch we've tested, but check it out compared to the newest XGT 40 volt 3 quarter inch impact wrench from Makita, showing five seconds worth of reverse from that one. This is one of, if not the most impressive cordless impacts we've tested in the Makita, at least so far in this test, it's above that as well. And what about the Milwaukee one inch? No, no, not that one. It's more powerful than that one on a five second test for sure. I'm talking about this one, yeah, the D handle. Let's take a look at that in its preferred direction. So that's what it takes, again, so far to beat the TTC M60 gas gun. Let's keep it going. Our next test is called Max Torque, 10 seconds in reverse now. Here's a bone stock Milwaukee 2767. Seven twenty-eight. not bad. No, really, this gun is up there. 
Okay, now for the uh, don't try this at home model. Nine forty-eight. Again, that's pretty spicy. It is trailing off there at the end. For some context, let's see it versus the very reverse happy Makita three-quarter inch XGT. So the gas gun comes out a bit on top again, but as you can see, the Makita is closing the gap quite a bit. That's because the XGT isn't slowing down, but the M60, I'm afraid to say it is. You could probably tell around four seconds left in the run, the M60 bogs down a bit, and then even more at two seconds left in the run. This same phenomenon happens beyond 10 seconds and to a more dramatic effect, which means ultimately today this gun was never able to crest 1000 in our testing. 978, 988 maybe, but never 1000, which means tools from our large impact list all do eventually in a 15 second test surpass this gas gun in the stats. After reviewing the footage and data, we don't think this is a limitation of the hammers and anvil mass in the gun, believe it or not. As if the anvil is stationary from the hammers no longer really doing the trick, the gun would really have no problem with that and just keep banging on. But we did see a drop in RPM from the engine as things got over, let's say, 900 foot-pounds tight. So if we do want to make more power someday, a version 4 maybe, we do need more horse purrs. The 60cc two-stroke we used did come with a bit undersized 14mm carb that measured more like 13mm, so a 15 millimeter one might be choking it down a bit less. And along with other improvements we have in mind, let us know if you want to see us hop this thing up until we find the breaking point. But for fasteners, let's say under 900 foot pounds, ignoring this tool's size and weight and ergonomics and heat, well, yeah, you get the idea. This thing takes off stuff in that class of fastener faster than anything we've seen. To demonstrate that, we thought an 18-wheeler wheel and tire would be a good example, but we've only been seeing these star pattern five nut ones around these parts. These nuts are smaller and less torque. So we instead over tightened a traditional 33 millimeter semi-truck lug nut to 600 foot pounds, 100 to 150 foot pounds over suggested, you know, like in real life before corrosion. And felt like seeing the difference between the pixie dust cordless and our dead dinosaur cordless model. Here's the M18 doing that. 1.9 seconds, hard to be disappointed with that. And here's our M60. Zero point eight seconds, just under half the time. Imagine doing 10 lugs on a semi truck in just under eight seconds of impacting. So believe it or not, testing the M60 gas gun has taught us a few things that you can take home. The hammers inside the M18-2767 are not currently the technological and space packaging limitation of a gun like that. There is of course a ceiling to these things once that mass is fixed and not changing, but assuming a Gen 3 Milwaukee high torque was just a more powerful brushless motor or like a M36-36 volt variant they're starting to dabble with, it would still make more power. Not that this is the best route for those beans, but saying these tools don't need to be bigger to be better is always good. And number two, we're currently not at the limitation of power for a half inch cordless impact. The current half inch anvil on a Milwaukee can receive quite a bit more power, maybe even 20% more or so unchanged, if you're willing to murder some sockets, of course. We theorized when we tested the new Makita 40 volt three quarter inch that it's so good and makes so much power that a half inch version may not exist from them because a half inch anvil wouldn't survive. But intermittent blows to achieve tightening torque is a wondrous feat of physics, and there seems to be more ground to be gained there. 
So come on, Mikita, make a half incursion. And yes, we could use that extra power sometimes. There's plenty of scenarios that water down the power delivery of your impact wrench. Till then, we'll be here to tell you which ones cut the mustard and which ones fall short of their claims. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you for subscribing. If we get there, thank you for helping us reach that 100K subscribers. We work for you and gotta say we're pretty happy with our boss. Big shout out to Logan. Without him, none of this would have been MacGyvered together. And thanks as always for watching.